Welcome to What's Treading with Tire Review, presented by Apex 2022. I'm Maddie Weiner, and today on the podcast, I'm joined by Tony Puckett, CEO of Sun Auto Tire and Service. Tony is a 35-year veteran, uh, Valvoline veteran, most recently serving as head of Valvoline's Quick Loop division, where he oversaw the growth of that business from 900 to 1,500 locations. He joined Sun Auto in September 2021 as the company's CEO and has been involved in another period of record growth for Sun Auto. Tony, welcome to the show. Thank you, Maddie. Looking forward to it. Yes, yeah, same here. So, um, you know, Tony, I was going through what we've published about Sun, o- Sun Auto over the last year and counting up the acquisitions, the growth that you all had in 2021. And I found that Sun Auto purchased 11 auto service brands and entered 12 new states, adding 180 stores to um, to the brand. So that that's huge, obviously. What aspects of the company do you credit for this growth? Well, Maddie, it certainly was a team effort. You know, the the growth uh, was was part of the the strategy of the company. Um, you know, the company really just began in in, uh, the end of 2017, early 2018 with the first acquisition. So they've been really busy uh, before, you know, I met the team and the leadership, um, you know, they they had built an incredible pipeline. They they bought a number of really high quality brands in in predominantly the Southwest markets. Uh, But 2021 was unprecedented. Uh, You know, we basically doubled over the last 12 months and so you know uh, you said who's to who's to deserve the credit i think the entire team because it, it really took the entire sun team and all the the leadership from operations to the back office uh certainly the MA team and and the sponsors the financial sponsors uh both you know uh, greenbrier previously and now leonard green is is the new uh, majority owner yeah for sure that's awesome and i, I do have some questions about leonard green but first i, I wanted to Come back to your Valvoline experience. Obviously, you grew uh, the Valvoline Quick Lube division pretty tremendously. Um, So when you think about, you know, think back on that growth and how that was able to happen, what do you feel are some tactics or strategies that you learned from spearheading that that you plan to or have applied already to uh, growing Sun Auto? Well, for sure, you know, a career uh, that long with Valvoline, you know, I like to think I grew up in Valvoline um, and just a great company, uh, incredible brand, uh, most importantly, phenomenal people. And so, you know, what I learned at Valvoline is, you know, always surrounding yourself with the very best talent and team that you can, um, you know, creating a common vision and and values of how you want to run the business and and then really seeking to get the buy-in of the organization um to move towards those goals and and you know the the exciting thing that i was able to be part of at valvoline was having that growth and seeing the opportunities that were created for the team members um you know it was good for certainly uh, our teams it was good for our guests as we delivered a great experience and ultimately it was good for our investors as we you know performed well and provide those you know great returns so you know I, i see something similar here uh at sun we have a great opportunity you know, in a really large automotive uh, segment, you know, I think to continue to look for those premium brands, you know, uh, seek to bring those great teams with them and then, you know, bring them into our portfolio, support them on a larger scale and continue to grow not only the opportunities for our our Sun Auto team members, but uh, also, you know, ultimately in building our customer base and providing strong returns for our investors. So to answer your question, they're very, very similar uh, as far as, you know, it's they're both people businesses, they're both service businesses, and fundamentally they're driven by a great experience, both for our team members and for our guests. Yeah, no, that's great. And I do have a question about, um, you know, how you guys incorporate dealers into the business um, when you do acquire, you know, a company, an independent tire dealer. But I do want to know first, um, how does Sun Auto acquire independent businesses? Um, Are you, you know, reaching out to shops uh, independently? Do you have a network of dealers that are, um, you know, talking with other dealers about, um, you know, succession planning or anything like that? Uh, You know, when, when, I guess my first question is, how does Sun Auto acquire its businesses? And then when you're talking with dealers, what are some top reasons, um, you know, they partner with you or they sell their their business with, with to Sun Auto? 
Well, I'm glad you asked that. I, I think there there is something I think pretty unique about what uh, GB Auto now Sun Auto uh, has been doing, and you know part of that is uh, on the first part of your question. There's both a proactive and a reactive you know uh, component to it. So certainly we have team members that are out in the market that uh, know people in the industry and are you know making themselves available you know to seek their understanding of, of hey are you going to be interested in exiting the market? Do you have an, you know do you have a a transition plan, um, and sometimes those those conversations could be you know one two plus years you know in the making. So you know really developing a relationship with um, potential you know prospects that may be interested in selling in the future. But it's also reactive. Um, what what I've found uh, to be really exciting uh, in coming over to the business is a number of people um, you know owners that we've acquired you know they've been in the industry grown up in the industry second generation sometimes third generation um, you know you have that legacy and in many cases you know they they seek to sell at this time but they still want to be in the business so we bring we onboard them so what's unique i think about sun is you know versus you know maybe in my past when i was with valvoline with a 150 year old brand you know, when we would acquire a quick loop operation, you know, we would transition the brand to Valvoline Instant Oil Change immediately. Mm -hmm. uh, here, we don't do that. So, you know, if we have a strong market brand, um, we keep the brand and we tell the owners that. And we bring over their team, which is going to be the most important component is we need those great team members. And then if the owner wants to stay in the business, we welcome them. So, you know, we're happy to have them join the team. Uh, we value their leadership. They've already been really successful, you know, in building, uh, you know, their market strength. And so, you know, we're happy to have them join us. So I think that's a, a little bit unique in, in the how we go to market. And I think, you know, that's going to continue to be a key part of uh, what we're presenting out in the market as an opportunity moving forward. Yeah, for sure. And, and when I've talked with, um, you know, dealers that are part of the Sun Auto family, as I know you guys like to call it, um, you know, they, they've said, um, a differentiating factor is, you know, you have all these successful businesses under um, sort of this one brand, but uh, for them, it's, you know, sharing best practices from, you know, different regions of the country and taking what, you know, um, for example, Plaza Tire is doing in Missouri and applying that, you know, if there's a new tactic in um, like Oklahoma where Tate Boys is or something like that. So um, yeah, can you can you kind of talk to how those best practices are spread and how that how that all works? <laughs> yeah, well, it's it's uh, again, it's people, right? I think everything yeah. ultimately, is, you know, from my view, is centers around our team and the interaction of the team. In fact, uh, you and I were speaking just briefly earlier that I just left, uh, a, a, you know, an offsite conference with my team, and you know, we had a great uh, time together really planning, you know, where we're headed and what the priorities are and, and how we continue to do just what you described, which is, you know, how do we share those best practices and, you know, make that easy to do. In fact, our, our entire team, our, our uh, service center managers, uh, entire field leadership, we're coming together in, in later here in March um, to, you know, talk about the game plan, you know, and, and really share the vision of, of what Sun Auto Tire and Service seeks to be and and how we all, you know, I think, you know, we'll work together to, to bring that uh, to fruition. But the exciting thing is, is it's natural to answer your question. Um, as the leaders get to know each other, the operators from market to market, um, you know, we want them traveling each other's territories, um, helping each other, you know, with, with challenges that we have, um, things that, you know, maybe they haven't faced that, you know, now we're doing here, as you you know, we, we operate, um, businesses that are more tire forward and some that are more service forward. Um, mm -hmm. In all cases, you know, the, the common theme is, you know, great talent trying to serve the guest and create an experience that's memorable and differentiated so that we can bring those guests back. And so, you know, I think the the idea of creating, you know, um, a best practice sharing is common, you know, in, across all of our markets. You know, we're trying to help each other out, you know, um, and that's 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 a, a great way for the team to get to know each other as well. When we onboard someone, you mentioned Plaza Tire, uh, Mark Rhodes, his brother Scott, incredible operators, owners. Um, you know, they're our newest acquisition, a very large acquisition, uh, premium, premium operator. Great people, you know, mm -hmm. uh, father started the business in the early 60s and, you know, they've run it and built a great business. Um, T.O. Haas was an acquisition that was late in Q4. Uh, Mark went over and he'll, he'll be responsible for, you know, that part of, of the country. So that's an additional 
24 stores that you know he'll be bringing the support of, of the plaza resources and and they'll be best practicing together you know they're both in the same model um but it's exciting because you know i yeah. think uh, they may not have uh, they may have known of each other in the past and now the the teams will be working directly together so it, it's very exciting to see that and then you know we'll we'll look to add stores between those markets out in lincoln and in uh, missouri and you know, like you said tate boys down in oklahoma so part of the strategy is really again always focusing on the premium operators and uh, bringing them into the fold and then trying to help them through best practice yeah very cool that's awesome that's, that's so interesting you guys have a lot of um you know, uh, very successful, like you said, you know, independence on on your on your team. Um, I, I did wonder too, I mean, you know, our, our industry is experiencing such a labor shortage. Um, and, you know, you could be, in, in my opinion, just because I talked to so many independent tire dealers, you could be one of the best operators out there, but still have these, you know, people not showing up for work or mm-hmm. open positions that do affect the operations of the business. So is there a way that Sun Auto is addressing this? Can you maybe speak to that? Well, I, I would agree with you. I think it's one of the biggest challenges uh, in our industry um, in not just you know automotive service and tire repair, but anywhere in the retail, uh, any retail industry. And so, you know, I think it, it's more challenging on a number of fronts, but I think maybe the most important one is, you know, if we're, we're out there with the competitive pay and competitive benefits, you know, mm-hmm. ultimately, um, you know, how are you appealing to, you know, the talent that you seek uh, for fit? And I'm really talking about culture. And so how do we create a company that people want to work for and, and want to be part of and they see an opportunity for themselves? And, you know, I was mentioning to you, we're bringing the, the core leaders for our team together here in March. And that will be the, the thing that we focus on the most is what an incredible opportunity that we have, not only to you know, build our brands and, and serve more guests and, and take care of them and their families. But by doing that, we create more opportunities for our own team members. And that's very exciting. You know, I think if that can't motivate any leader to want to be part of that. Um, so to answer your question, I think, you know, I always tell our, our leaders, I said, tell your story, share your story, because I think a lot of young people, you know, they would look at our business model and say, you know, I don't know about that. I don't know about cars. I don't know how to work on them and and we're not looking for that you know we're we're looking for you know people that have a great attitude and and are, are have a good work ethic and and want to learn and grow and if they do we can teach them the business and you know what we'll offer them is is way more than a job you know we're we're offering careers and and we can demonstrate and show them you know like last year you know we doubled in size what does that mean well there's a lot more opportunities here for you and you know we're going to do that again <laughs> so you know yeah. the exciting thing is you know you've come to the right place you know let us help you be successful here and i think that'll be the most important thing to answer your question of not only how we attract talent but how we keep it and you know we want to grow our family and that that's a key key part of our strategy i'll say it's the foundation of our, our business model yeah very cool really interesting too um yeah no that, that's awesome it's great to hear um now I, you mentioned earlier in our conversation obviously um uh, Leonard Green Partners came on as the uh, majority owner of Sun Auto in September when when you um, you know joined the company as well. So um, you know it, it seems like from what I've heard in the past from Sun Sun Auto, it's you know obviously there's a lot of pathways for growth for um, like you're saying with for technicians for um, owners that maybe want a a control over a larger um, you know, larger area, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, so under that new ownership, it it doesn't seem like that. You know, sort of Sun Auto family philosophy has changed. Um, is is that correct? Or you know, still no, keeping I, on that path? No, you're you're absolutely correct. Um, I think it's an extension of of what the strategy has been. Um, you know, in fact, uh, Greenbrier, who was the previous uh, majority owner. Uh, they stayed in as a minority, so they really liked the business and they wanted to stay involved and and, and continue to invest. Um, Leonard Green, um, they're just an amazing company. And, you know, it's easy. You would say, well, that's easy for you to say, Tony. But, you know, I made a really big decision to join the company, and, and it was in large part uh, because of Leonard Green. You know, when I looked at their portfolio, um, the incredible brands that they have within the portfolio, their, you know, success record is, is uh, you know, I, I, I don't know who to compare them to. But, you know, as you look at the um, 
over time how successful they've been. They've kept a really consistent strategy. They look for industries that they want to participate in. They look for uh, you know businesses that they believe you know are going to be not only stable but high growth. And mm-hmm. then they seek to put together the strongest management teams that they can. And, and by doing that, I think what they create are you know really they take good companies and they help them become great companies. But you know, they are incredibly supportive of, of our team, um, you know, the challenges that we have, the investments that we need to make, um, you know, private equity sometimes uh, is, you know, people refer to them as being impatient. I know that's probably true of, of any investor, but I, what I would say about Linda Green is they seek to build really great companies. And, and my experience has been that's exactly what they're doing with Sun. And, you know, they're allowing us to invest in the areas that we need to, uh, our talent, our technology, our process, fundamentally our growth, our M&A, uh, our green fields. So we're very fortunate to have them and Greenbrier uh, as key, you know, uh, investors for us. And I think, you know, they're going to allow us to become, you know, the greatest company we can be. That's great to hear. That's awesome. Very interesting. Now, Tony, I have to ask you this question because obviously Sun Auto, like you said, had a record year last year, um, you know. Sun Auto is on the East Coast with its acquisition of uh, Hogan and Sons in Northern Virginia. And then you guys expanded to the Midwest with Plaza Tire Service, which we've talked about, um, which I think was in November. And then, um, you know, you guys are in the Southwest, um, Midwest, East Coast now. So where where are you, where, where will Sun Auto concentrate growing its geographic footprint in 2022? Well, that's a great question. Um, I think, you know, largely we'll continue to strengthen, you know, uh, all the markets that we're in. That's our highest priority. And, you know, we we, we still have opportunity there. You know, I, I mentioned to you earlier, um, we just brought on new leadership to head up our Greenfield strategy. So we're excited about that. Um, you know, we continue to have strong um, pipelines for our M&A and we'll continue to work on that. Um, but we're not seeking to to jump markets. Um, you know, we're, it's really opportunistic driven. And so if, if the right opportunity comes, you know, we'll look at it and evaluate it. Um, but, you know, there there isn't, a, a, you know, a component of our strategy that says, you know, we will absolutely not go somewhere. Um, but we're not seeking to go just anywhere. You know, if, if the right opportunity doesn't come, we'll be patient. Um, so I don't know if that totally answers your question, but <laughs> You know, we we like the markets we're in. We think we can be stronger in each of them, and so I think we could stay really busy if we didn't enter another state or another market. But I, I'd say that's probably not going to be the case. You know, we'll continue to grow, and uh, as we have opportunities with you know um, owners that might be interested in selling, um, you know, we'll pursue those appropriately uh, on the timing that works for them. Gotcha. Very interesting. Well, we're we're looking forward to seeing that growth. And um, you mentioned, you know, setting a vision for the future. I don't know if you can share anything about that. Uh, maybe in the next five years. Um, is there anything any anything additional where you're like, oh, we definitely want to be in every region of the country, or anything along those lines, or maybe not sharing that right now, or. Mm-hmm. Well, probably, you know, wouldn't it wouldn't be wise for me to throw out numbers to you because I, you know, the, the reality is, uh, you know, our our vision for the future is to continue to serve more guests, um, right. you know, and, you know, our teams enjoy doing that. And obviously we want to get better and better at it. But, you know, we we have a very small market share in a, in a very large market. And so I think the growth opportunities are significant, you know, um, and so I don't I don't see a slowing down. You know, if anything, we we and have more horsepower uh, with the backing that we have, but um, the patient side of it comes from when you grow really fast, like we have. Um, yeah. You also have to be patient enough to build the foundational systems and processes and platforms, technology. You know, our marketing um, across the board, and and that's we're really working on that uh, right now uh, on a parallel path for our growth. So, I think what you'll see is we'll be very steady. We'll be steady and consistent. Um, I think the most important thing is that we we strengthen our business so that our organic growth is is really, really strong. So, you know, on a same store sales basis, you know, when I see those numbers, that gets me excited. Uh, the health right. of our business continues to be strong. Um, it tells me our team members are delivering a great experience consistently. And so that's what we'll focus on. And then we'll grow our M&A and our green fields as the opportunities present themselves. You know, we certainly have the support, the financial support that we need to do that at, at the pace that we're ready for. And I think that will be the key governor uh, to the engine will be, do we have the talent? 
um, and the foundational platforms that gives us the strength and the confidence to grow faster. As we have that, then we'll, maybe we'll get to talk again, Maddie, and I can, I can share some exciting news about uh, how much more we've grown, but uh, we, we'll be consistent and predictable. I, I'd say that's what I'm looking for is uh, being able to provide you know, uh, strong uh, results consistently and taking care of our, our teams and our guests. Got it. Great. Well, yeah, no, and, and that's uh, very exciting for Sun Auto, you know, all this growth. Um, and uh, we're looking to, you know, forward to covering that uh, as it happens this year and in the future. So um, very cool. Well, Tony, I, I really appreciate your time today. Thanks for giving us some insight on Sun Auto's growth and, and what's in store. And um, yeah, it's been it's been a great uh, pleasure talking to you today. You too. I, I appreciate you taking the time to get to know us and I look forward to talking to you again in the future. Sounds good. Thanks. Take care.